everyone and welcome to my gel printing basics video where I'm going to hopefully encourage you all to get that gel plate out of its packaging and start using it to create some art. So this is how I set my gel plate up. I like to keep mine on a piece of paper. There is a small piece of paper behind the gel plate and then this is setting on my background paper. And then I just tape the corners down so that my gel plate does not move. When you get your gel plate, it is in this plastic packaging. You can keep that to store things in if you like. You do not need to keep the plastic pieces that are on the edge, sort of hugging the gel plate there. Um, some people keep those and make stencils out of them. It's totally up to you, but you do not want to return the gel plate back to that inside plastic. It will actually cause bubbles. Let's talk about some of the supplies that you will need to work with your gel plate. This is a set of brayers that I recommend to a lot of people in my classes because it comes in this set of two with two different sized brayers. It also has this piece along the back. That is where you can set the brayer when it is wet so that the rolling part is like face up and the paint is not side down like getting stuck to things. I also like this speedball brayer. This is a softer brayer. It's very smooth, like butter. From the side, if you squeeze it, you can see it has a little bit of give. It's soft. The other two brayers I showed you are harder. Either one is just personal preference on which way you go with your brayers. Same thing with paint. I'd say start with what you have. You can even start with a basic craft paint like one of those colors there or just like a mid-range acrylic paint. Everything I'm using today is all acrylic paints. I'm just showing you a few different paints here that I have on hand and a few different brands, but you guys will notice that the theme that I'm going to keep repeating is use what you have on hand, even if it's cheap, even if you don't know like what it's going to create, and then experiment and go from there, and then maybe start investing in some of these like nicer paints. Like these golden paints are a bigger investment but I've been painting for a long time and I love the way they feel on my gel plate so I use those. Um, I also like the soft body Liquitex paints and I have a link below for a small set that you can also get on Amazon. I really do enjoy layering those up. Um, I use them a lot in my landscape course. And the small one on the right there is what comes in the little set that I'm going to link below. It is a great starter pack of those paints. I also have these high flow acrylics. Um, you will see me use this a little bit later. These are really, really fluid. Hint, high flow. <laughs> so then the Lucas paints I absolutely love and I use them a lot. These are some of my favorite colors, Arctic, Indigo, White. Um, you will notice that I have a couple of these that are getting a little bit tacky and you'll see how I troubleshoot and how I use those later in the video. There's another one of my favorite colors, Fern. Stencils are another thing I'm going to use in this intro video. I have a couple different brands here, again linked below, and then these are masks that I made myself. I have a video where I show making these and using them, uh, but I did not get around to actually using them in today's video. Go ahead and grab a couple things from around the house that might help you make texture, cardboard pieces, um, that cardboard tube is from paper towels and then that's just like a lid from a lotion or something in my bathroom and then a good old standby um, everybody usually uses um, bubble wrap on their gel plate at some point. I also printed this off the internet just to help if you are curious about color theory at all Go ahead and find something like this online, print it out, and keep it next to you. I've heard several people worried about making mud. This shows you primary, secondary, complementary, and analogous colors, which is really important because I always encourage you to go ahead and pick analogous colors, which are what I call neighbors on the color wheel. They're next to each other, and if you pick colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, that means they mix well together and you will not make mud. All right, here is some palette paper. Um, I used that at one point in this video, and that's nice to have sometimes if you mix paints off to the side, not on the gel plate. All right, next up, let's talk paper. You can definitely start off with cheap copy paper. 
This on the right is also Bristol board, and I like this Bristol paper. Let me show you that pack. This is what that pack looks like. It's a thicker paper. I use that to make more like finished, complete pieces of artwork like landscapes and stuff and then this is watercolor paper again I'm using papers like this this nice high quality paper on finished pieces of artwork another go-to that I use is this um, Canson biggie sketchbook paper I cut it into fourths and then I use this on my gel plates so it's still like a nice paper um, but it's thinner off to the side, you'll see that I have this mixed media, like, um, art journal. And this is where I roll my excess paint over to the side in this book, and I'm working on filling it up with all of this, like, excess paint rolled over, like, off my brayer onto the side. For me, it's fun because I can usually remember what painting days those are. So here I am set up, and we are ready to get started. So for this first pull, I am going to use craft paint. And then the paper that I'll be using is that Biggie sketchbook paper. Um, for the remainder of the video, I'm using that Biggie sketchbook paper. So when you are rolling the paint around on your gel plate, keep in mind that a rolling back and forth motion, just a back and forth, will not always work. You are going to need to lift your brayer and then start rolling again. So it's kind of like you're rolling in that same direction over and over again, except when you go over onto the right hand side there to remove the excess paint, that can be a back and forth motion. So here I did pretty a uh, pretty light coverage, and when I pull it up, almost all of the paint is going to be removed, and that was just one color of paint on your gel plate, my brayer did leave a little bit of line, so there are some imperfections, but honestly, that's part of what I love about gel printing. It's never quote unquote perfect, like painted, like if you were just to paint a square on your paper. So now I'm going to use two different colors. Um, I moved on to some golden paints, but again, you can keep using what you have on hand. This time I am going to use two different paint colors on the gel plate. And I almost started like with the magenta at the top, but then I thought, you know what, I think I want to use the lighter color first. I'm going to start with the yellow, and then I'm going to go on the top and now spread out the magenta. And then my goal here was to let them kind of meet in the middle and start mixing. And remember, when we talked about that color wheel, I'm using colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. They are neighbors. That means they mix together well. And that means this is a red and a yellow, and it's going to start mixing to create orange. So at the bottom there, I was using my brayer a little bit too much, and it started to remove the paint back off of the plate. And see, I'm keeping stuff in there like this so that you guys can see it, and you'll know how to troubleshoot that. I just added a little bit more yellow and kept rolling in that one direction. But I still got my orange in the middle, which was my goal. So I've got my magenta, yellow, and orange. It is a little bit spotty there on the bottom. You can kind of see where I dropped that yellow paint. And I wanted to do another one of those. So I'm grabbing my second brayer, and I noticed my second brayer had some spots on it. So I thought I would just take a little pause here and let you guys see the fun of doing a really long paint peel. And I just peeled that old paint off of my other um, Amazon brayer. So I've sped that way up because I did the same process. Magenta on the top, yellow on the bottom. Boom. Got another one of those. And you will see I layer things on top of those later. Here is another way of combining paint. Except this time I'm mixing it together. So if you notice, I am spinning it around in the circle. And then doing my usual motion. So that time I mixed the color, but I mixed it all over the gel plate. And so now when I pull, I have one paper of this color mixed with the magenta and the yellow. So I lost a little bit of video footage there. I wasn't recording the whole time, but I started again with yellow on the bottom. And I took an old painting, an old piece that I had, and I wanted to pull up some of the yellow and show you what it looks like over this blue 
And then I wanted to show you what it looks like on top of red. And see how it's made like an orange? Just by layering the yellow on top of our first print. That first print is that reddish color, the craft paint. And now we've got yellow on top and it's made like an orange-ish color. Now here's two different yellows. And when you flip them over, you'll see that the paint company is helping you by letting you know how opaque the color is. So this yellow I'm using now is a little more opaque. And I wanted you to see how this layers on top of everything. So I only did it on this one side. I'm going to lay that down and show you how it covers up most of the red. Rather than really mixing together and making an orange, it kind of just lays on top and covers it. Now, since the first time I used the yellow and put it on the bottom there, I did two pulls and I pulled some of that yellow. I did want to give you a fair pull where I'm showing you this yellow is a little bit opaque as well and it will kind of sit on top of the red, but when it was the second round, when I had already pulled some of the paint off, it was much lighter. So I'm not a huge fan of cleaning off the plate with baby wipes, but I will show you that later. So I went ahead and just pulled up the yellow. Now this is a fluid acrylic, and I wanted you guys to see, see how it's like kind of bubbling apart? It's like almost spreading off of the plate. And that's a um, transparent. I was showing you that the bottle actually says transparent on the front. But then this is so fluid it almost peels away and starts peeling off and it leaves those white spots. I personally do not hate that. I kind of like it. But if you were wanting like a solid um, color, you know, then that's, that's not, not going to be something that you probably like. Here's that arctic color. But you'll notice I had a little bit of the green left on my brayer. It mixed together. Again, I'm okay with that. But if you were wanting a really precise, perfect pull, then you would want to make sure you cleaned your brayer off better. But this is like a cool mixture of two colors just that happen naturally on my brayer. All right, here's another color. This one is more opaque. And we are going to put that down. I'm going to cover the entire plate. And let's start making some textures. I'm gonna use that paper towel cardboard and just roll it down. And I didn't even expect that. It created these cool diagonal lines. Let's layer it on top of this other piece of paper that has the Arctic and green. And this is gonna be our first like layering with texture. Love it. All right, another Lucas color. And I'm covering the full plate again. And this time I'm using a stencil. Now, sometimes I go over with the brayer again, and that's just removing some of the paint. And there's gonna be different levels of paint now on the gel plate. So when you pull this up, you're going to see where the stencil was and there's going to be kind of like different levels of how much paint were in different areas because I pulled some of it up. Now here I am showing you that you can clean with a baby wipe in between sessions, especially if you're not wanting any of that color to carry over. So I'm going to continue on with a couple different stencil techniques for you guys. This time I'm covering the whole plate with indigo. And now I've left the stencil on and I'm using my paper to pull up the pattern on one of these pages that had the gradient from magenta to yellow. And talk about awesome. And that is working really well because of that high contrast. So I had the warm colors in the background, and now I've got this really, really high contrast with the indigo. Again, using that baby wipe to pull off some more of the paint. 
healing up my stencil. We're going to let that dry. Wait and let that dry. And then once that is dry to touch, I am adding some white paint. Now this is one of my paints that's kind of getting kind of tacky, kind of weird. Um, so it's probably time for a new bottle of paint for me, but that's another story. So peeling that up. And I can kind of see some of the green peeking through, which I really like. I, I honestly wish that would have happened a little bit more. I wish I would have pulled up a little more of the white. But that wet white paint is what is pulling up what was dry before. I love using that technique. Now there was still a little bit of the indigo left. So I'm putting down some of this teal color and I'm trying to pull up as much as I can. And there it is. And I like that subtle, like, kind of like the hint of the stencil that was there. I'm going to clean the plate off. This might be the last time I clean the plate off like that. I might just start using what I have because my style is more of just kind of letting things build up and letting things layer, but I wanted like some clear, um, clear kind of pulls here for you guys in this example video. A different stencil technique Again, I laid the stencil down first, then I applied paint. So this is going to be different because now when I pull up the stencil, there's this whole section where there's no paint at all. And I'm going to apply that onto another the other like gradient piece I had. And there it is. Now you'll notice it's kind of similar to the one that I did, the leaf one where I laid the leaf stencil down and put the paper on. So those techniques kind of turn out the same, but you can um, apply the paint and apply the stencil in two different ways there. Again, I'm gonna pick up that leftover paint. I really don't wanna waste any of it. And I like layering up different stencils and different things. Now this was kind of an oops. I still had some indigo left on my brayer. And so that whole section there in the middle is really just like leftover indigo paint that's smeared across. And I had kind of way too much yellow paint there, so I was showing you guys that I just kind of kept pulling with my brayer, pulling with my brayer, and trying to get some of that paint off, and then did my pull. And you can kind of see all these little hints from the many little stencil pulls that we've done. I let that dry, and now I'm putting this um, fluorescent pink, <laughs> like I almost said teal. <laughs> And these are new to me, these um, Blick um, Fluid Acrylics, and that wasn't really working the way I wanted. Again, there was a little bit too much. You can see where it was pulling over on the side. So I wanted something that was going to soak it up really well, and I went and got this deli paper. And you use not the waxy side, use the other side that feels, like the side that feels like it's going to soak up paint. Put that side down. And then try to pull up all you can. And look how cool that is. Like when you use that in like a collage or something, that um, yellow and pink and blue, yummy. That's going to be really cool. All right, I'm going to try again. But this time it was with a Lucas pa um, pink. I wanted a different textured pink that would hopefully pull up more of this paint, unlike the fluid acrylic. So if you notice when things dry and you can put a wet layer on and then try to pull up as much as you can and you can tell that the top I had a thinner layer and it did a really good job of pulling up my paints but the bottom was a little bit um, see I'm pointing here see how it's a little bit thinner looking there I had a thinner layer of pink this pink layer down here was super heavy and it didn't do a good job and it left behind lots of that orange. So when you do that pull up layer, when you're trying to pull up the dried paint, you almost want that layer of paint to be like a ghost. You kind of want to be able to see through it. You, you need enough wet paint to be there, but you want it almost like a ghost layer and see how then it pulls everything up. Because I did like the right consistency. So yeah, think of it kind of like a ghost layer. You apply the paint, but then you want to be able to kind of see through it. So that was the fern color. 
and I just needed a, I wanted another background paper there and I'm still trying to pull up as much of the background as I can because I had told myself that I wasn't going to use the baby wipes again. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting with a different technique here. I am starting with the like apricot color, then I'm laying down the stencil, and I removed a little bit of it by rolling the brayer, and then I wanted to put the paint over on the side on palette paper, and then roll it around to kind of let this magenta mix with the apricot color. So then I've got two different types of colors working there and I'm going to pull that up on this paper that has the fern color on it. But since these colors are more opaque, you're not really going to see that green color anymore, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, I really could have probably just like pulled that on white paper, but that's okay. I want you guys to see these different um, these different things and how how and why these are going to happen. So if you loved that green, you don't want to lose the green, and that's what's going to happen if you use a more opaque color. You're going to lose that original print. But if I had done more transparent color or something with a, a stencil where it showed more of the texture, it would have been really different. When I use bubble wrap like that, I don't push all of it, I kind of leave some of it not pushed and then I push on parts of it so that there's just kind of a variety there. And then I'm using this circular lid, kind of repeating my circle theme. And this is pulling up bits of the paint. And then I thought I can even flip it over and really pull up some of the paint. So now we've got bubble wrap, circles, medium sized circles, and then full circles. And I'm laying this pink paper down. Nice, and it's looking more purple again because of that color mixing that we talked about earlier. I just did a blue on top of a red or pink and it made some cool purple tones. So I went ahead and grabbed this paint that I had on the palette paper. I didn't want to leave that there just wasted and to dry. So I'm going to use this circle lid again and instead of using a brayer, I am using this to apply the paint. So keep that in mind too. If you've got tools that you want to add paint to, you can use that to apply the paint to the gel plate. I would just make sure that you use something that's not sharp or anything that's going to damage the gel plate. You do want to be careful. And then this I'm going to layer up on top of that piece I started with all the circles. There you go. And this is starting to show you guys how you can layer up one by one by one on the piece of paper. But now let me show you what happens if I want to layer everything up on my gel plate. So I had the blue layers and not all of that got pulled up and that's fine, I kind of like that. And then I added the magenta circles with the lid and that added another layer. Now I let that dry and I'm adding green paint and I'm removing and pulling different pieces with this piece of cardboard. This piece of cardboard, by the way, is from a box of dimes at a bank. So if you're ever at a bank and you wanna ask for some of these cool boxes, that have the circles on the side, that's what that is from. Now, I did just use a little craft hair dryer. Some of you are gonna freak out, but that's what I use sometimes when I'm impatient, and I go really quick. It's just a little blast, and you move, you keep moving, and you go fast, because you don't really want to be applying heat to your gel plate, but I'm just a little rebel like that, and that's okay. Um, so I added some pink here, and if you notice, I didn't do a perfectly flat layer of pink. I left it so it looks kind of spotty, and now I'm using the paper towel roll to pull that up. And guess what? The side of the paper towel roll is a circle, so I'm going to repeat the circles again, and now I'm removing some of the paint with the side. I've just really kind of like gone off and taken over with this circle theme. But each of these little layers now, I'm laying layering them on the gel plate rather than before where I let it layer 
like I put the paint down, then I put it on the paper. Then I put the paint down and I put it on the paper. Now, as you let things dry and you keep layering up on the gel plate, you know, that works over here too. And what you need to remember in this process is the layer that you did first, so that teal with the bubble wrap, that was first. And then the magenta circles from the lid, that was second. That is the order that that is going to look on your paper. It's gonna be like a reverse order, so the teal is gonna be in the front, then the magenta is behind it, then that green is behind that, then the like fluorescent pink that I just did is gonna be behind that, and now this arctic color is behind that. All of these are layering backwards, and I'm working my way up to that final wet layer of paint where I'm then gonna pull everything up off the gel plate like we have done before but we just did it in the past like a more simplified version but I wanted you guys to see how all of this can kind of come together on this big layered piece so now I am adding this like apricot color and remember I want it to be kind of like a ghost I want to see little hints of the painting that I have underneath there so I slowed it down just a smidge here so you can see I'm rolling carefully to remove some of that paint. Then when you rub this, make sure you get all the edges all inside because when you go to pull this, you're pulling every single layer. Oh, the anticipation. And there it goes. You can see I've kind of slowed it down and I'm going slow because I really want to pull up all of that paint. So I'd love to know in the comments, what do you guys like? Or if you're brand new, tell me which one you're most excited to try. But I'm curious, are you the type that likes to layer over on your paper, layer by layer by layer? Or do you like to layer things on your gel plate, these big, yummy, like layered pieces and pulling all of it off in one pull? I think they both have their place and they're both really fun. So there's all the little different circles. You can see the bubble wrap, you can see the coin box circles, then you can see the circles that I made with the paper towel roll, and then obviously the big circles from the lid. So I want to take you guys through and just do a quick little run through here of each piece that I made in this video today. And we went all the way from just creating one color with one pull on the gel plate all the way to this really layered piece. I think it's kind of fun to look back really quick on this little journey. And I would love to hear from you all in the comments. I'm curious, are there other areas that maybe you still have questions about when you're working on your gel plate? Have you started using your gel plate yet? I would love to hear like what stage you're at. What are some other things you might want some help with? Maybe I can make another more detailed video on like specific things that you might want help with. And as always, if you like this video, please like this video, subscribe, and chat with me in the comments. I love hearing from you all. Have a great day, guys. Happy creating.